Hello, this is Michael with Zentail, and on this video we'll review the new inbound shipments feature and how it uh, ties into the feature restock date on Amazon. So to get started, uh, what we'll cover is how to create an inbound shipment and then how to edit it. Uh, we'll go into more detail about how this ties into Amazon's restock date. We'll cover the benefits of uh, leaving an inbound shipment open and why you may want to do that. And then lastly, we'll review how to manage your lead time and how Zentel will calculate that for you. So to get started, uh, to access this screen, currently you can go to zentel.com forward slash inbound shipment inbound underscore shipments and you'll see this screen here so to open that for us um, right now it's in beta first to create an inbound shipment we can use the pencil icon to create a new inbound shipment the required fields are vendor what warehouse this is getting sent to and we'll need at least one SKU with quantity so to walk us through this I might create a shipment ID and a PO identifier for my vendor which is required um, I could either type in a vendor in, uh, into this field or I could use a drop down here if you have a number of vendors, you can start typing and then select one. If I know my shipping cost, I can enter it now. If not, I could leave this blank. Warehouse is stating what warehouse is this being shipped to. So if you have multiple warehouses, make sure to select one. And receipt date. So this is not required, um, but this is your estimated receipt date. It's also a field that can be edited later on. Um, if you leave it blank, uh, you may be able to leave open inbound shipments and use um, a receipt date based on your lead time, which is something we'll cover in just a minute. For this, I'll say our uh, receipt date is one week from now. Uh, carrier, again, if you know this, that's great. You can uh, enter it, otherwise um, you can leave it blank. And lastly, for the products and shipments, I'll click add a product, search for the SKU for my catalog. Um, I just want to do this one SKU, um, but I could always add multiple SKUs into one inbound shipment. I'll need to add the quantity, and then I have the option of adding the cost. So we'll say this has, this is for 20 units, and this is going to cost me $4.50 per unit. So if I include a cost, then as soon as I mark this as received, this gets averaged in to the current cost for that SKU. If I leave this blank, then we don't do anything with it. So I'll hit create, and you'll see this show up on my uh, window. It's been successfully saved. And it's the third one from the bottom here. All the information I entered is displayed, uh, the PO identifier, the shipment ID, uh, this is the vendor I selected and uh, created um, what warehouse it's going to. And right now it's in pending status. So let's just uh, go back to the, the slide, uh, the deck for a moment. Now we'll review how to edit an inbound shipment, including updating its status, uh, what fields can be edited, and how you can add and remove SKUs in quantity. So for the one I just created, shipment ID ABC1230, I click on it to open this uh, menu again. Now to change the status, I have my two options here. I can either mark it as received or mark it as canceled. There is a, another status that this could flow into at this point, and that is shipped. The only way that you could mark an uh, inbound shipment as shipped is if you actually enter your carrier and your tracking number. And then if I were to save it at this point, I could then mark my uh, inbound shipment as shipped. 
in this case, um, I'll leave that blank. I'll say I uh, want to, this is actually getting sent to a different warehouse, so I'll change it to warehouse zero. And instead of having just one SKU in here, it has multiple SKUs. So this is all editable because you know, we know that things can change on an order or you may not have all the information available at the time that you create this inbound shipment, so you can always come back to it. And then I could save this information. We'll notice that my warehouse has changed. I'll also go into this and now mark it as uh, received so it's actually come into my uh, warehouse and I've been able to um, to process it and make it available for purchase at that point assuming that you don't have any outside inventory integration for whatever warehouse is receiving this in my example it's warehouse zero the quantity would automatically become available on those SKUs if you do have an outside inventory integration um, whether it's another software that you're using to manage your inventory or a 3PL or an FBA warehouse. In those cases, um, marking it as received won't, won't cause the quantity to become available at this moment on Zettel, but we'll wait until we get the update from the outside integration uh, to mark it as available just to uh, ensure that it's fully processed. So we can mark this one as received and you'll see the status uh, change here from pending to received. So, how does this play into Amazon's restock date? Uh, the main thing is relative to the inventory feed. So when we send an inventory message to Amazon, uh, we could either send them the available quantity or the restock date with the quantity that's available at that date. So for a certain SKU, if we were to look at um, another open um, inbound shipment, we would say that this SKU 0002 has a quantity of three and is coming in on a certain date on the 13th which is actually in the past so as assuming this SKU has available quantity in our system in any warehouse uh, that we're able to send to Amazon then we would send that available quantity but as soon as that SKU, as that SKU becomes out of stock we would then send a future restock date with the quantity in this inbound shipment Next, um, on this slide is what date do we send to Amazon if we're using the future restock date. So in this case, it's a, a date in the past from when I'm recording this video. Um, if this were a future date, uh, let's say the 30th or the 29th of September, that's the date that we'll send Amazon. And we'll say that on the 30th or the 29th, we have three units available for purchase. People could order it now and we'll ship it out when we get it. For this example, um, it's a date in the past. So we will we'll review what happens when in this situation. Um, this is a pending inbound shipment that we haven't closed or marked as received. Um, it could also be possible that there's no estimated receipt date. It would have the same effect. Uh, so we'll, let me talk about the benefits of this and why people might manage it this way. If, there, if this is the case with the past receipt date, then we'll send the date to Amazon of today's date plus lead time. So it's whatever lead time that you have for that vendor or that SKU or on your account settings page. Um, I'll review that again in just a, a, a few minutes. That's the next slide. But for this example, for SKU 0002, which we have under vendor Vera, if we have it in place where the uh, lead time under Vera as a vendor is five days, then we would tell Amazon that five days from now, we have three units available for purchase. So the reason why you may want to do this is if you have a nearby vendor or a supplier, you know that you have a, a steady line of 
um, of supplies is still available at your manufacturer or your at your supplier, but you don't actually have it on hand. However, you still want to make this quantity available for purchase. So you know that if someone were to order some units from you for, of this SKU, you could always get it from that vendor within however many days, that would be your lead time, and then ship it out to the customer. So to review, uh, the first date we would send to Amazon for the future restock date is always the estimated receipt date, assuming that that date hasn't uh, passed yet. If that's not the case, then we'll go with the current date plus lead time. So we calculate uh, your lead time in this priority, meaning we'll first look at this first bullet point, that is the vendor on your vendor management page for the uh, vendor for that inbound shipment, and then work our way down uh, eventually to the default one if nothing else is filled in. So to review the vendor on the vendor management page, um, in this case, I have Vera as my vendor. To access the vendor management page, you would go to your account settings. And on the left side, you'll see the vendor slash brand management tab. Select vendors. Vera is not the most um, uh, timely vendor that I have. It actually takes about 67 days. Uh, for an order I placed with Vera to, to come in stock here. So in this case, I would show 67 days um, past my current date to Amazon for that open and bound shipment. The next example of, uh, or the next place we'll look is the lead time entered on that SKU on your catalog page. So if I were to look at SKU uh, 0001, which was our first inbound shipment, and open it up on my catalog page and click the edit button. You'll notice that under this product's general info, there's a field for the purchase order lead time in days. So if I did have this filled in for 10, but I did not have the vendor filled in from that inbound shipment, the lead time field was blank, this would be the next place we look. After the SKU, we'll then look at the vendor based on that SKU. So even if this lead time were blank, but I were to look at um, the vendor that's filled in here, and uh, in product groups, vendors is under the product group section. I would then refer to the vendor filled in here, and the lead time on my vendor management page for that vendor. So if either, either the vendor is blank on the SKU at this point, or the lead time for that vendor is blank, we will look at the company settings. So this is in your account settings page, under company settings. You could fill in a default purchase order lead time in case it falls to this level for any one of your inbound shipments. In this example, it's four, so we would get all the way down to this point and we would just send four. If for whatever reason this is not filled in and this is blank, then the default uh, lead time that we would send is two days. So I hope that's uh, an exhaustive overview of our inbound shipments. Um, we're excited to, to make progress on this and get feedback on this feature. Um, on any future iterations, we hope to be just increase the value for you. So please reach out with any future feedback or questions that you may have. Besides that, thank you very much. Have a great day.